speak to you in short about a subject that the Lord had put in my spirit. And I know that we're enjoying this time, you know, just enjoying life. Amen. And we're coming into another election, as I often refer to, and I know the devil's going to kick up his heels. But I want to tell you that we are in a war, even now, and it's not a natural war, it's a spiritual war. So the subject today is going to be spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. And, and, and this is important for this hour because we know that, as it was alluded to earlier, spiritual is invisible. So you can't see physically what the enemy is doing and you don't recognize that he's attacking you. He makes you angry, gets you short tempered, gets you want to fight, and take away your peace. He wants to take away your peace so you're not refreshed. But you need to be refreshed from time to time in order to keep the battle going. So I have a scripture that I want to read for you is actually a get it here Ephesians I think I gave it to you No, we're going to get down to six. And ten. Six and ten. And what does that say? It says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wise or the strategy of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits, principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places. We see here we have a list of our adversaries. Each one of them have authority to disrupt your life. And what he wants to do, he wants to keep you from growing in the things of God. He doesn't want you to see that God is giving you the increase. The increase for what? To overcome. The Bible told us that we are overcomers. Look in Revelation, the last book. It says to them that overcome. It didn't say anything about the ones that didn't. But to the ones that overcome. I'm saying that because spirits are out and about. They're working against you even now. And if you're not able to discern you're going to have a rough day and you'll have a rough week and it will continue until you faint. The objection of the enemy, the objective rather of the enemy is to cause you to faint. He doesn't want you to use the power that you have been granted by the Holy Spirit. Now I want to say this, you can't walk in the power unless you have faith. Faith to believe God is the God of his word. If he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he would bring it to pass. So in this hour, in this time that we're living, I need you to be aware that I'm glad you sang that song because the enemy is working against every avenue. I don't want you to be afraid, but I do want you to be 
able to recognize the reason things are happening in your life is because you have not taken authority. God is giving you authority over all the authority of the enemy. Amen. And so in this, we've been invited to put on the whole arm of God that we might be able to stand against the strategy of the enemy. Amen. I want to show, share with you, and I'm probably just going to reference it, uh, how the enemy wants to come in and attack and keep you from reaching the promises of God. I think it's Numbers. What was the 20? 21. Turn with me to Numbers 21 chapter. And in this, we will see that the adversary has assigned demons against you personally. He sees your potential. He sees the ability for you to be blessed. And as a result, he doesn't want you to be blessed because you're going to tell somebody else. Is that the way it go? When God bless you, you open your mouth and tell him somebody. He doesn't want the word to get around that God is good. He wants you to keep going through and continue to testify of your woes and your oaths. But God said what he wants you to be, he wants you to be an ambassador of his kingdom. He wants you to talk about his goodness. No, I don't want you just to be a talker. I want you to be a doer. I was sharing on Friday night when we talk about helping the needy. That was the subject. And I said, sometime to help the needy is going to take a spiritual anointing. You got to lay hands on somebody. And I'm not talking about in their collar. I'm talking about spiritually believe in God for their breakthrough. So I was saying, sharing with the congregation how the brothers was going up to the temple to have a prayer and this gentleman was sitting there begging. He had been brought there every day. Peter and I think it was James. And they were going into the temple and and the beggar was asking alms. And, and and he says to them, he says to him, Look on us. And he says, Silver and gold I ain't got none, but I got something. Such as I have I give to you in the name of of Jesus of Nazareth. And you know what happened? He got up and walked. When the man of God says, get up and walk, I'm saying that because spirits are there to keep you bound and keep you from being successful and cause you not to reach your goals. And so it's going to bring disappointments. And we're going to see in this scripture Chapter 21. And we see here in this context, it is about when God was bringing Israel up out of Egypt. 
And when he was near Jericho, the Moab people saw the multitude and the king, he wanted to hire somebody to curse them. Imagine that. Hire somebody to curse. The devil want to curse you. He want to stop you in your tracks. But I want to show you something in the scripture today. It doesn't matter what the assignment of the enemy is. Because you belong to God, nobody can do anything other than what God allowed them. Nobody. So if you're going through it, it's because God suffered it to be so. It's all right. But I'm here to tell you that there will be adversaries in this backslidden prophet Balaam had had been called up by I think it was Belak to curse Israel. Thank you. I like what he said and, and before he, he could go the Lord told him up front don't go. Don't go. But he's going to try to get a way to go any, anyhow because Balak has offered him all kind of money and positions. Sometimes the enemy trying to bribe you, show you a pocket full of money, only if you step out of the will of God. But I want to say to you today, it's important for us and you to recognize when the enemy is working against you. You can't see him, but you know that you don't feel right. And I'm not talking about physical feeling. I'm talking about just you just feel uneasy. Something is going on and you don't see it. So what you need to do, ask God, say, God, show me what's going on. Show me in the spiritual realm so I can fight back. Don't want to fight blind. I want to fight knowing what I'm fighting. But in this case, the enemy was in front of them out on the plain. And they saw the multitude there. And old Balak says, come, Balaam. I want you to come up and curse me, these people. Because I'm afraid if they come up on us, they're going to lick us up like grasshoppers. Just eat it up all the vegetation. But I want to say unto you, in this, he had promised them great things to curse the people of God. And what happened? When he got there and wanted to curse them, the Lord said, you can't curse these people because they're blessed. I'm going to say it again. I know they hired you to curse Israel, but Israel is blessed. You cannot curse what God is blessed. I'm saying that because sometimes we're in a bad situation and we think that we're not going to be blessed in it. But I want to tell you, in spite of your situation, you are more than a conqueror. One thing about this scripture, it tells me how Balaam had got up to go. And, and he got his little donkey, saddled him up, and was on his way. God had told him not to go, but he was going to go anyway. Kept on vexing to God, giving permission. But originally God told him not to go, and look what happened. As he was on his way to see Balak, there was an angel standing in the road. Now, Balaam couldn't see the angel, but God had placed him there. Sometimes you can't see what God is doing, but God is working it 
He's working it. Even if you can't see it, he's working. But so we see here that a donkey is there carrying his master. And when he got to the angel, the angel had a sword in his hand. And the master couldn't see it. Couldn't see anything. And when the donkey turned out of the way, the master was upset and began to beat him. That happened a second time. And the master began to beat him. Then the angel of the Lord went on down because every time he would get to the, this place, the donkey would cut over to the left or to the right. But in this time, the angel went to a place where they couldn't turn. So now Balaam and his donkey is going down the road and they come to the angel again. And then the donkey fell down. And he began to strike him a number of times with a rod. This, And you know what happened? Ain't God good? I say, ain't God good? God allowed the donkey to have the ability to speak. To speak, he was so upset, he didn't recognize the donkey was talking to him. And so now we find out the donkey say, why are you beating on me? I've been a good servant to you. I carried you since I was able to now. And I've been good to you. And you beat it on me? Then Balaam say, because you didn't hear, you didn't obey. And then the Lord caused the donkey to say, I mean, the angel to reveal himself. And the angel said, if you had been stopping to go on with the way you were going, I would have killed you. I would have killed you, but I wouldn't have killed a donkey. I would kill you. Long story, the story is that, that in the end, when the donkey had gotten out and talked to him, and the angel had revealed himself, the Bible says then that the man corrected his thought. He corrected his opinion. The Lord allowed him to go on to speak to Balaam. I mean, Balak. And when he got there, you know what his message was? He says, you call me to curse these people. You can give me a house full of treasure, but I can say no more than what God permits me to say. Did y'all get that? I can only say and do what God permits me to do. But nevertheless, there are people that is after you. If you don't know your privilege in your covering, you're not going to stand in confidence that it's going to work out. But I'm here to tell you there are adversaries has been sent towards you to distract you to upend you and to keep you from being prosperous. But it's the will of God for you to prosper and get, be in good health, even as your soul prosper. But sometimes the enemy will know that you're not going to fight properly, meaning that you're going to try to do it in your own strength. Every time you stand up to do it in your own strength, you're going to fail. I went that way to show you that there are unseen attacks, things that you're not aware of that has happened to you, and you wonder why you're so angry, wonder why you can't even sleep, wonder why you vex. It's because there's a spirit following you that you can't see, and he's vexing you. 
But when you know something is happening that you can't see and you can't recognize it, it's important for you to know that God got angels in camp round about you. I say he got angels in camp round about you to help you, help you. For the angels have been sent to be adversaries of the people of salvation taking care of us. Now, in this case, the Lord has sent, amen, angels to protect his servants. And you see here, the, when they got there, and he says, Balak said, just curse me, these people. I like what the Lord told him and what he repeated to Balak. He says, I can't curse what God has not cursed. I cannot curse what God has not cursed. Instead of a, a cursing, he began to open his mouth and blessed him. I'm telling you, this was the enemy, the one that had been hired to curse. Instead of cursing, he opened up his mouth and blessed. I said that to tell you, whatever is working against you is only working to be a blessing. In the end, it's going to bless you. You're going to be all right because God said he would be with you and he would not forsake you. He's there with you always, even to the end of time. But sometimes I feel I'm in my house and I don't have the freedom as I want to. And sometimes there's oppressing spirit comes upon me and I'm sitting there and I don't feel right you don't feel right and you're praying and sometimes you don't recognize it's not about just praying it's about rebuking did y'all hear me rebuke no, it's an adversary. Open your mouth and rebuke because it says give you power over all the power of the enemy. But I like in this case, Balaam could not do no more than what God permitted him to do. And when he was hired to curse, Balak was upset you know what he said? He says, I hired you to curse, curse my enemy. And you blessed him. <laughs> Altogether blessed him. In this time that you're living, the stuff you're going through, not to destroy you, but to bless you. Whenever you're in warfare, there's got to be a victor. And with the victor, Come to spoil. There is something that you didn't have that God is getting ready to bless you with. But because you don't recognize it, you don't approach it with the right mindset. Know this that you're blessed. When? And always, thank you. I am blessed now, and I'm blessed always. So whatever come upon me to try to disturb me, to try to hinder me, remember this. It's not hurting you. It's promoting you. It's for your good. Even if it looks bad, it's for your good. And so the spiritual warfare that we're in, because it is spiritual, you can't use natural approach. You can't use a two by four. You can't use a brick. You can't even 
use your fist. As much as you want to use your fist, it's not going to work. Know this, church. I say unto you today that your adversary is lurking about and his purpose is trying to distract you and to keep you from becoming all that God has assigned you to become. You are great people. And great things are happening. But all of us have been handicapped without recognizing it. But I believe now it's time for us who are people of God to wake up and say, I'm not going to take this anymore. I'm tired of this because the Lord has given me authority. You have to use your authority. You have to believe you have it in order to walk in it. Now, there is somebody is facing impossible things right now. The enemy has blocked your eyes and you can't see the victory. You cannot see the victory. That's all right, Bella. You can't see it. People, the Lord would have me to say to you, whatever you are facing, the victory is yours. The victory is yours, and you're going to be fine. I don't care how bad it appears, you're going to be just fine. That's what God is saying to say. But don't forget that you got to fight. You can't sit there and do nothing and just hope. Have understanding. Amen. And when you pray, pray with authority. A def uh, not only a defensive prayer, but an offensive prayer. God has given me the victory over this circumstance, and I will walk in it. I will not be subject to my circumstance. Even what you see me stumbling and bumbling around here, I have a vision. I speak it, I believe it, and I claim it. Amen. I know there are things that have come against us that will try to stop us from being all together who we are. But today the Lord is declaring in the congregation that he has given us the victory. Turn to somebody and say, I'm in a war, but I'm winning. I don't care how it look, I'm still winning. And in the end, it will speak for itself that God has caused me to be victorious over my enemy because he's prepared a table for me in the presence. In the presence. So today, I don't care what you are combating, how hard it is, I want you to go out here with a smile on your face, showing your teeth, or showing where your teeth was. God has given us a victory. God has given us. God still work miracles. God still work miracles. I say, God, still work miracle. Have faith, have faith 
and now could we say it one more time have faith in God have, have faith in God have, have faith in God for set. Come on up. If you need strength, come on up. If you need healing, come on up. If you need a different perspective in what you're experiencing, come on up. The, as we said yesterday, the hospital is open. The ER is open. It's open. Hallelujah. Come on up. Hallelujah. Come get your strength. Hallelujah. Come get your healing. Come get your deliverance. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on up, ministers. Hallelujah. Come on up. Come on up. Hallelujah. Come on up, doctors. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hello and welcome to NEP Ministries. My name is Pastor Lee Choate and this is my lovely wife, Masha Choate. And we're so thankful that you chose to be here with us today. We know you have lots of choices to listen and to stream from, but we're glad that you chose to be here with us today. Yes, you are welcome to worship with us every Sunday morning yes. at 11 a.m. at 9.